Okay, well, Jeff Goldberg from The Atlantic and Bloomberg View, welcome to the Lowy Institute. Thank you. Um, let me begin by asking you about the Gaza conflict in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Now, now that the dust has settled, temporarily at least, who emerged on top? Uh, well, if you ask Hamas, they emerged on top. If you ask Israel, Israel emerged on top. I think it's fair to say that they both won something mm -hmm. out of this. Hamas. One, uh, first of all, when you're when you're a group like Hamas and you fight Israel and you survive, mm -hmm. you've won. Israel's mm -hmm. the stronger power, so of course it has much more to prove in order to to claim the win. Mm -hmm. um, so Hamas has that. It, uh, it 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 very importantly, Hamas got a lot of international mm -hmm. uh, support. I mean, international, I mean uh, Turkey. The Turkish mm -hmm. foreign minister came. Um, Qatar is supporting Hamas now. Uh, the Egyptians obviously are behind Hamas in a way that they weren't before. Mm -hmm. um, so they got a level of international legitimacy. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they didn't succeed in in, 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 in in achieving what they wanted to achieve, which is to uh, kill large numbers of Israelis, among mm -hmm. other things. Um, Israel won uh, in one crucial battleground, uh, which is that it got to test mm -hmm. its new anti-rocket missile system, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the Iron Dome system, and mm -hmm. it turned out to work brilliantly. Uh, so that is whether or not this was was this was a thought at the time. Mm. It kind of brings you to the to the conflict everybody's worried about, mm. which is the Iran issue. Mm. Um, if Iran is watching what happened, mm. they have to say to themselves, "Well, the Israelis have a pretty good." Uh, pretty good means of protecting their airspace from mm -hmm. missiles, so mm -hmm. we have to think about that. How does how does Iron Dome change Israel's calculations in relation to an Iranian nuclear bomb, and how would the Gaza conflict uh, of the last couple of weeks have been different if Iran had a nuclear weapon? Well, I don't think it changed the calculation mm -hmm. that much. I mean, the the issue for any sovereign state is not how. Often a terror group or an enemy is successful at killing your civilians. The the metric is how often are they trying? You know, you mm -hmm. don't you don't you can't judge it as a national leader by mm -hmm. saying, well, uh, you know, they are trying to kill us, but they keep failing, so we're not going to worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, it obviously it obviously brings us closer to the point where the Israelis would seriously contemplate. Uh, attacking Iran. They've obviously been, been thinking about attacking Iran for some time, mm -hmm. but this is a data point in favor of an attack, which is to say we have some means to protect ourselves that we mm -hmm. didn't know for sure that we, we had before we saw the system in operation. Um, as to your, you know, the, the larger Iran question I guess you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're asking about, um, you know, I, I, I tend to think that uh, we are moving toward uh, this confrontation. I, I've been I've been thinking about this quite a bit because I, I used to think that uh, okay now we're we're certainly heading directly toward uh, a, a confrontation. Um, I'm now of the mindset that perhaps a year from now we could be sitting down having the same conversation and we might be in the same exact place where where, where ambiguity reigns mm -hmm. where. We're not sure how close Iran is to a nuclear weapons program, where Israel is still contemplating doing something to stop it. America still has sanctions in place. I'm not sure where we're we're going to be in a year. It just seems like everything is building toward this kind of of mega confrontation. Mm -hmm. And on the mega confrontation, um, you what what do you think the the likelihood? Or what? Let me rephrase. What do you think President Obama's preparedness? to use force to interrupt the Iranian nuclear program is likely to be? I mean, it depends on the circumstances and what brings it out, but do you think he would press go? Yeah, look, I've always thought that he's serious about, about Iran, about the, about the issue of Iran's nuclear program. Uh, and I take him at his word when mm -hmm. he says, uh, A, he doesn't bluff, and, and B, he means to stop them from gaining a nuclear bomb. Uh, obviously, there are people in the U.S. Uh, who disagree with this perspective, who say that there's no way that this guy who was voted into office originally to unwind 
American involvement in the Middle East, Iraq, Afghanistan, is going to pick a fight with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one of the largest powers in the Middle East. Although one could argue that they've been fighting, Iran and the U.S. have been fighting for 30 years in a subterranean way. Mm -hmm. This would just bring it out into the mm -hmm. open in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so there's uh, good arguments on both sides of this. But I do believe that, that Obama understands two things. One is that the threat of nuclear proliferation in the Middle East, which is the world's most volatile region, uh, would be an acute national security challenge to the United States. Um, and I also believe that, that he knows that he's on the hook in the sense that he said multiple times in multiple different ways, many different formulations, he's not going to allow Iran to go mm -hmm. nuclear. If Iran goes nuclear, despite his wishes and promises, he not only undermines his own historical record, the record of his presidency in some huge way, uh, but he also uh, he undermines America's global position mm -hmm. because you will have a third-rate power, Iran, basically showing up the world's sole remaining superpower. Mm -hmm. And I think he takes these things into account. I don't think he wants to go mm. have a confrontation with Iran. Nobody really wants to have that. Um, and he's hoping that sanctions obviously work to change their behavior, but I think he's also not... Um, overly confident that sanctions alone are going to change that behavior. And I think you wrote during the election campaign that if you were an American voter whose primary concern was to stop Iran from getting the bomb, you should vote for Obama rather than Romney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It caused a bit of a controversy, obviously, because people think that the Republicans are going to be stronger. And their whole argument of the Republicans, uh, and Mitt Romney in particular, was that uh, Obama's weak and feckless on foreign threw policy. Threw Israel under the bus. Threw Israel under the bus, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, which of course is ridiculous. The Iron Dome system mm -hmm. is partially funded by the United <laughs> States, so if that's you know, that's they threw that's Israel. Thrown under they the threw bus. under Israel. Yeah. They threw Israel under the Iron Dome, which is a good thing, <laughs> not a bad thing. Um, but uh, it, it's always easier. Look, it's always easier in this age for a Democrat to make war and um, a Republican to make peace. If you look at Obama's record on drone strikes and the number of countries he's involved in and the assassinations that the Americans are, are conducting, including an assassination, at least one, of an American citizen who was allied with Al Qaeda in Yemen. Uh, Think about what the public response would be if he were a Republican, if this were George W. Bush. He's basically carrying through many of the policies of the Bush administration, but carrying them through as a Democrat, so people don't complain about it as much. So, so Obama, on a whole host of issues, has more latitude to deal in a, with, 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 in a military fashion, in an armed fashion, with some of these problems. Republicans can talk a good game, but they're much more constricted.